It's a fight to the death. Which one of us has the most flaws? We'll find out soon. When I was a little girl and I first read the Sailor Moon manga, I always wanted to know more about this Sailor Cosmos figure. Now that we have the Sailor Moon Cosmos movies, everybody has been paying more attention to this character, Sailor Cosmos. And as such, we finally have our very first non-posable figure of Sailor Cosmos. Now I say that with an asterisk because there are also Q poskets available which are also licensed, but alongside that we also have a really beautiful non-licensed version of a Sailor Cosmos resin figure, so I'll show you that too. But today I'm unboxing this figure, which I have been looking forward to having one of these in real life for many, many years. So the fact that we had this announced about 10 months ago and it just shipped at the very end of May was incredibly exciting. So let's go ahead and unbox and review the Darkness Calls to Light and Light Summons Darkness Sailor Cosmos Figu Arts Showette from Bandai Tamashi Nations. Now over here you will also see Sailor Moon Eternal and that is because these two figures actually go together. Both of them are posed in very similar forms so you can pose them together, you can set them up in your collection separately. I also wanted to mention that yes I did purchase two of the Sailor Cosmos figures. Reason being is because Bandai is known to have a lot of paint flaws in these Figu Arts Showette figures. I've been purchasing all of my figures from Japan, which does mean that I receive them earlier than the international releases come out, but it also means I'm being charged for that international shipping from Japan. Now luckily this is a fairly light figure, so the weight did not increase the shipping cost too much, and I appreciate that Bandai always puts them in these nice cardboard boxes whenever you purchase them straight from the Bandai website. Premium Bandai! So the first thing we see is this beautiful eight-pointed star at the top, which is see through it's a see-through window and it says Sailor Cosmos at the bottom with the name of this figure on, labeled on it. Let's take a look at the box. Okay so here we have this beautiful window box of the Sailor Moon Cosmos figure from Benda and Namco right there. We have the labels as we usually do along with the Tamashi Nation's quality sticker up at the top which honestly their quality is not that great so that doesn't mean much. We have the gold Toei sticker down here for it being a light licensed figure and of course we have the other labels down at the bottom as well. I like the gold foil that they did her name in, that's really pretty. Along the other sides are some beautiful prints of the Sailor Cosmos figure. In case you want to keep this in the box, this is a lovely box that you could keep her in. And because I did purchase this directly from Japan, there are no warning stickers for small items. Uh, plastered over the bottom of this. The bottom of this box has this really beautiful gradient wings. Those are really pretty. And you can kind of see her on the interior right there, but let's go ahead and open her. Oh, she looks pretty. I can't wait to see her out of this plastic molding, which does definitely protect your figure when you're unboxing her. One of the first things I'm noticing right out of the box is the fact that her wand is already in her hand, so you don't have to stick it in her hand like you do with the Eternal Sailor Moon version. I feel like I should put something on my door frame over there so that whenever I do these kind of shots, you have like a poster back there or something. Or should I leave it blank so that the background is not cluttered with a bunch of posters? I don't know. What do you think? Should I cover it with something cute or leave it blank? So I have heard online through some of the folks that I follow over on Instagram that this figure also did have some issues in terms of flaws. First, let's just get all this plastic off so that we can review her as a full figure before checking out all those flaws that you should look out for. Okay, so here we have the full figure unboxed. I'll show you a up close and personal image of her so you can see her. Her wand or her scepter is very beautiful. I love that it's already in her hand so I don't have to fiddle with her fingers and try to stick it in between them without messing up her fingers at all. So I really appreciate that that's already set and ready to go. She has all of the details that you would expect like she has her rings here, her entire thing of rings. Her hair feathers are also up here. Let's look at her feet. I love her 
shoes, the little feathers on her high heels. They're really beautiful. I would totally wear those. I also really like that her hair has some translucency at the bottom and it also turns into that light lavender color and lavender is my favorite color in the world. So I really love her color scheme. It's one of those things that very much attracted me to Sailor Cosmos when I first saw her. Her base and her stand is definitely a little bit different from Sailor Moon's. There's not a column holding her up on the crystals. Instead, we just have the base with this gold cover and then we have the crystals right on top of that. So there's no column like you see here. That was dust. Okay, good. I thought I saw a flaw in her shoes and I was going to be like, what? No. Overall, I really like this figure. I like her stance and her pose. I think that's very beautiful. And I love how tall she is. She's not too tall. She's definitely on par with all the other figure arts zero showettes. And her hair looks very, very flowy and looks very ethereal. She has a lot of small parts like these right here and of course her hair at the very ends. So definitely be careful with those pieces. You don't want anything to break off. I also really like that her cape is kind of translucent at the end, although it goes more opaque the closer you get to her back. Okay, so now that I've taken a look at the character all together, so how does she compare in terms of flaws? One of the problems that we experienced with Eternal Sailor Moon, of course, was the inconsistency in terms of QC or quality control. So a a lot of people got figures that had really strange flaws. There were issues with dust underneath the paint and things like that. There were scuffs or little specks all over the place. So it was kind of a struggle to find a good high quality figure, especially for this price point. As I'm looking at Sailor Cosmos, I don't see any major flaws, but I might be able to pick something out. Her face is really beautiful though. I very much appreciate how they did her facial features. The white eyebrows is a choice. That's interesting. I would have preferred her with uh, like brown eyebrows or even like a dark lavender or dark purple eyebrows. I think that would have been really cute, but they went with white. I do see a few small flaws, like she has a little black dot on her neck. It's barely noticeable, so that's not necessarily something that I would be angry about. Her pigtails look good overall, although there seems to be kind of a glob of paint right here. So it looks like they could have brushed that out a little bit better or made that look a little bit more high quality. Like if I run my hand over it, it does feel a bit of texture. I found another little black dot on her cape, but again, it's pretty small and it's hidden on the backside. I don't know if you can see that piece very well, but there is a scuff in the paint on the back of her pigtail here. So in terms of this character, it looks like most of the flaws are fairly minimal. They're on the back of the character. So it's not really something majorly bothersome. So overall, she looks pretty good. What is that? What is that? That's weird. Okay, this is strange. And I want to show you in the frame and hopefully I can get this picked up on the camera. There's this line here. It almost looks like a piece of scotch tape underneath the paint and I can feel the edges of it and it looks like they just painted over it. That's very strange. It's so hard to see though. It's incredibly hard to see unless you're like putting this up in the light. Why would somebody leave a piece of tape there? That's so odd. I don't want to like scrape it up and ruin the paint. So I guess I'll just leave it there, but that's so weird. If my memory serves me right, I'm pretty sure somebody on Instagram had also mentioned that they found a piece of tape under the paint. So if that's the case, then this would not be the only figure that had that problem. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out for. Okay, so now that I have checked her over for flaws. I also wanted to check her out next to Eternal Sailor Moon. So here's the two figures side by side. Now they are about the same height, which makes sense since they're both the same character. This is the same person, just different evolutions of this character. The crystals are definitely slightly different. On Eternal Sailor Moon, we have more of a pinkish color and on Sailor Cosmos, there's more of a lavender color. So they are a little bit different there. However, the bases do make them pretty obvious that they are from the same line. They're both the these darkness, what is it again? It's so long, it's such a long description. Darkness calls to light, light summons the darkness. It's such a long name. So you could definitely pose these together. I've uh, seen some folks put them together like this. I've seen some folks who have received their packages put them together like so, kind of back to back. I kind of like that. I kind of like them back to back, that's really cool. Uh, I've seen them side by side so that they're not really 
back to back or anything, but they are side by side like this. You could totally stick something here, maybe like a, a little acrylic stand or something like that. That'd be really cute. They definitely look really good together. Uh, one thing that I noticed to compare these two is that there's a lot of little glitter detail going into Sailor Moon. And with Sailor Cosmos, I don't see any glitter detail except maybe a little bit of glitter added to the translucency at the top of her wand here. But I think that kind of calls back to the fact that Sailor Cosmos as a character is a little bit more mature of a character. I mean, she is from the future, so definitely makes sense. But I do think it's kind of cool that over time, you can look at these two as the same personality and realize that Eternal Sailor Moon has evolved into Sailor Cosmos and she's still doing almost the same pose with her wand, which I think is a really interesting way to look at these two characters side by side. Like, yes, she may have evolved and gotten so much more mature based on all the different experiences she's had, but as Sailor Cosmos, she is still holding her wand in a very similar way. She is still protecting the world in, you know, in the eras of Sailor Moon in very much a similar fashion. So I I think I do want to open the second one and see if she also has this weird tape flaw in the cape. Uh, just to compare and see if both of them have that problem and see how consistent that issue is. Okay, so here I have the second Sailor Cosmos figure that I had pre-ordered. This one has pretty similar flaws, actually. She still has a few little specks of dust or little black dots in different places. There again is one on her throat. There's one in her bangs and I didn't see any. Oh, never mind. I found one on her cape. So there are definitely still little black specks on this one as well. And if I look at her in the reflection of my lights in my room, I again see that little piece of tape on her cape. So that's definitely a reoccurring flaw. It's not something that just happened to my one figure. It's something that I'm seeing across both of the figures that I had pre-ordered, which is a, a pretty big disappointment. I wish that they had fixed that or removed that piece of tape before, you know, painting over it because you can feel the tape underneath the paint and you can see it when you hold it up to light. Now if you're just looking at this figure not with a reflective light behind it then you can't see the tape. It's only when you stick something behind it that you can see it. So overall other than the little weird tape flaw that's a pretty big issue in my opinion. These don't really have a lot of other major flaws. It's a lot of the really small issues that I have seen from Bandai for previous figures as well. Given that this is a pretty pricey figure, it's not necessarily something that everybody maybe wants to spend their money on. I would expect them to have better QC whenever this thing is coming out of the factory. Now in comparison, I also wanted to show you my other Sailor Cosmos figures. We don't have a lot of merch that is Sailor Cosmos currently. We only have a few licensed items. So right now, those include some acrylic figures. We have this one and there is a human form, like a full scale form of Sailor Cosmos as an acrylic figure. We also have some stickers and merch like that. But in terms of figures, we only have these two Q poskets, one of which I just lost her pigtail. Let's stick that right back in there. These two Q poskets, of course, I can do a full video of all the Q poskets that I own because now I have a full collection of them. But otherwise, these are the only other figures that we have that are not posable of Sailor Cosmos. In terms of unlicensed figures, I have a huge figure in my collection of Sailor Cosmos from Gaka Box, and I also have a pin from Astral Pins. I actually have both variants of that pin, which is super exciting. So if you are collecting Sailor Cosmos items, then yes, definitely grab this figure, even with the minor flaws. She's still very beautiful overall. And this is the only non-posable human form licensed figure that we have of Sailor Cosmos at the time of recording. If you don't want to spend the money on these figures since they are kind of pricey, then I would recommend picking up one of these. There are two different versions. She has different hand gestures for each of these, but there is an A variant and a B variant. Or you could just grab one of these really inexpensive acrylic figures if you can pick one up in Japan, because generally these are really hard to find overseas unless somebody is selling them third party. So that's my Sailor Cosmos figure. I would love to know what you think of the two that I purchased, and if you grabbed one, did you also have the tape flaw, or is that something that some people did not experience? I would love to know that as well. Like, subscribe, do all the fun things, and if 
if you want to know where this shirt came from, then definitely subscribe over on my Instagram, which is at Sailor Snubs. That's where I post about a lot of new merch that I may not necessarily make a video about over here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao, Yes, my hair is naturally curly. Sometimes I just leave it like this. Eh.